Welcome to HPV World, a human papillomavirus professional education project related to the educational program of the Catalan Institute of Oncology. The World Health Organization called for a massive campaign to eliminate cervical cancer as a public health problem in the world within the century. Cervical cancer is the dominant cancer induced by HPV, though not the only one. The strategy defined by the WHO includes the recommendation that 90% of girls receive HPV vaccination by the age of 15 and 70% of women receive HPV screening at the ages of 35 and 45. And in 90% of cases, both for pre-neoplastic and neoplastic incident cases, patients should have access to adequate treatment, including palliative care. Achieving these objectives, by 2030, one should expect a 30% reduction in the mortality for cervical cancer. One of the keys to success for this strategy is participation. Achieving a 90% vaccination rate and 70% screening rates requires a very strong societal commitment and engagement, generalised participation of the population and special attention to minorities and high-risk groups. However, having achieved an excellent vaccine against a major human cancer, the field still has to face anti-vax and vaccine-sceptic movements that have created significant drawbacks in the campaign. For example, in Latin America, in Colombia, in Europe, in Denmark and Ireland, and in Japan, where vaccination programmes were interrupted for a number of years. Having achieved an excellent screening technology with HPV tests, Two out of three women in the world have never benefited from a screening event. The specificity of the HPV communication is even compounded by 1. The fact that HPV is largely a sexually transmitted infection, therefore creating problems of social stigma at the time of diagnosis and management. 2. There have also been discussions in various countries opposing individual rights versus any form of state or health authorities' mandates. 3. There have been some conflicts of introducing massive vaccination with local screening practices. It is important to recognise that both strategies, vaccination and screening, are trying to prevent the same disease, thus requiring a rational and cost-effective combination of both alternatives. 4. Screening for cervical precancer and cancer has only succeeded in developed countries where novel technologies such as HPV testing, are slowly being introduced. 5. The field has been suffering from conspiracy theories and conflicts of interest accusations that have plagued HPV communication in the early intervention stages in the 90s. It is clear that, to achieve such a high level of participation of the community into an intervention programme, it is necessary to create a state of opinion favourable to the proposal at all levels. Science has done its part by proving cancer causality of the viral infection and many other human cancers, as well as developing, validating and providing technology for HPV screening and vaccination. The Nobel Prize recognised the contribution of the HPV field in the person of Professor Harold Zurhausen in 2008. The World Health Organisation, the higher instance of public health, has indeed endorsed the programme by framing and promoting the elimination campaign. The media have been favourable to the elimination campaign, although in some instances also contributed to creating confusion in the population, notably by the growing impact of internet platforms. Globally, society has indeed approved and accepted this proposal, and over 50% of countries in the world already introduced HPV vaccination into their routine immunisation programmes and are slowly transitioning from cytology-based screening programmes to HPV-based screening programmes. But by far the strongest determinant of what individuals will end up doing is the advice and the recommendation of their healthcare provider. HPV World specifically targets the professional education of the healthcare provider with the hope that this knowledge will be transferred to the general population in the best possible way. Here are some examples of the contributions to HPV World available in the HPW Library.
Major reviews. In this case, it is the IARC Handbook on Cervical Cancer Screening and its value in modelling exercises. Acute health events. In this case, the COVID-19 pandemic affecting cervical cancer screening in the majority of countries. Position papers from the major health institutions in the world. In this example, a description of the HPV elimination targets for the century issued by the WHO. Mini monographs. These are collections of 5 to 20 papers analysing an HPV-related clinical issue from different angles. Here in the slide, you can see the cover page of a mini monograph on HPV and anal cancer that included 13 individual contributions. In this case, the monograph was printed on paper to be distributed as a courtesy at a seminar held in Barcelona. Printing such collections for educational purposes is a service available on demand. Results from major projects, such as the vaccination programme in Australia, receive a lot of attention. HPV Fact Sheets, in collaboration with the ICO IARC HPV Information Centre, which summarise the HPV statistics and cancer prevention related data for any given country. The fact sheet is typically introduced by a key opinion leader in the country. In this case, the slide shows the cover page of the fact sheet of South Africa, with the HPV type distribution in specimens from normal cytology to invasive cervical cancer. HPW influence in 2022. On this map, you see that North America and Europe are the areas in which HPV world has most of its influence. Plans are now developing to specifically address issues and needs in other parts of the world. Overall, close to 100,000 readers consult our files. The potential for expansion in 2023 and beyond can be defined over three lines of intervention. To interact and to support local elimination campaigns by publishing materials on the countries that have decided to introduce both HPV screening and HPV vaccination. Translations of the bulk of the library because it is clear that, as you move away from the core HPV professionals, the working language continues to be a barrier and it's now feasible and easy to accomplish to generate vernacular versions that can be used locally. Editing podcasts, facilitating access to the materials, both as an audio or as a video resource. Acknowledgements. There are a number of institutions that have endorsed the quality of the project, including the International Papillomavirus Society, IPVS, the HPV Prevention and Control Board, the HPV Information Centre, the Educational Programme, eOncologia, the European School of Oncology, Eurogin, Aogin, ESGO, UICC, and the Paediatric Association in Spain. We want to acknowledge the contribution of over 300 authors, three editors, the Next Generation Assistant Editors, and the ICO HPV team for their valuable contribution and their interest in creating a product that is useful. We have a team at TCP Group who provide technical and marketing support. Specific thanks to the many HPV stakeholders that provided unrestricted educational grants to support the project and keep it going for over 20 years. Last but not least, we recognise the work and support of the group of editors and collaborators at the Catalan Institute of Oncology and the ICO IARC HPV Information Centre who are instrumental in interacting with the authors and preparing the final format of the materials. In conclusion, in spite of the value of HPV vaccines, only 15% of girls and 4% of boys in the world are currently HPV vaccinated. In spite of progress in HPV-based screening technology, two out of three women in the world have never benefited from a screening event. There is still much work to be done. We need to communicate better. We need to share the effort. Would you like to collaborate? Subscribe to the newsletter, share HPW with your colleagues and contribute to HPW. HPW is one more push in this direction. Thank you very much for your interest and for supporting us 
should you wish to do so.